Will Lori Lee Malloy finally get justice 30 years after her death? Her daughter hopes and believes so. On March 7th, 1993, 30 years ago, just yesterday, Lori Lee Malloy was found dead by police on the bathroom floor of her Rhode Island apartment. Her boyfriend had told police he hadn't seen her in days and asked them to make a welfare check. Well, the police officer showed up to a very, very bizarre scene. The front door of the apartment was open. The faucet in the bathroom was running. There were two drinking glasses and leftover food on the kitchen table. The fridge was full of food, but unplugged. So much of it didn't make sense. Lori's body was naked and there were recent bruises on her arms and legs. There were slices of bread that were scattered around the body. Her hair was torn out of her head. Clumps of it were all over the apartment and there were hairs between her fingers and toes and bracelets of her own hair tied around her wrist uh, and ankle. Police began investigating as a homicide, it seemed to make sense. But then the chief medical examiner released his report, the forensics equivalent of nothing to see here. He even used the word unremarkable 22 times in that report. He chalked Malloy's death uh, up to natural causes, heart disease, citing cocaine use uh, repeatedly in the report. And that's the conclusion that is stuck for decades until Lori's daughter, Lauren, took up the case herself and convinced some very important people to exhume the body and take a second look uh, at her mother's case. And Lauren Malloy uh, joins me live now. Lauren, thank you so much. You've been doing so much work uh, behind the scenes. We appreciate you joining us tonight, Lauren. Uh, tell me, it's been 30 years. What finally led um, to them exhuming your mother's body? Brian, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, it's taken over two years to get to this point. Um, it all started in August of 2020 when I received a strange Facebook message from a woman who claimed she knew my mom. And uh, when we got on a phone call, she said that everything I knew about her death was wrong. The state totally got her case wrong and she didn't die of heart disease. She was murdered. Uh, it took several months to get the original autopsy reports, at which point in time I reviewed it. And to your point, you know, everybody said she was a known cocaine user but her toxicology screening was clean. And uh, that really stood out to me as did the other um, pieces that you've mentioned. And um, so I decided to look into things a little bit further because the case was closed. It was really difficult for police to do anything at that point. So I kind of took it upon myself and I met with the chief medical examiner in January of 2021, who said he refuted the original findings and said we needed to get state involvement, which I did immediately. Unfortunately, things took a little bit longer, um, but maybe fortunately at this point, because it allowed me the time to really look into her case and interview a bunch of people and do a ton of research. Um, and it was really just a matter of fighting and not giving up and not backing down despite being uh, sort of dismissed and rejected a bunch mm. of different times. And um, yeah, I you know, ended up getting a uh, independent forensic pathologist to give his thoughts about the case in March of 2022. And he said, you know, same thing as you, there's nothing in this report that uh, confirms what the original ME said, this all needs to be reinvestigated and redone. And eventually a lot of public support and local journalism and community efforts led to the state motioning to reopen her case. Um, that was done and uh, February 1st of this year, she was finally exhumed and we're just expecting results any day. And you are clearly a fighter. You've been fighting so hard behind the scenes, but one of the jaw dropping things about this is the original medical examiner uh, actually lost his license to practice for filing multiple inaccurate autopsy reports. This is the medical examiner who did your mom's initial autopsy and said, oh, nothing to see here. Um, that's just okay. gotta be infuriating. It, it was, but it was also very encouraging to me because it gave me something else to hold on to as far as a reason for getting her case reopened. You know, if we know that this guy lost his license and he was known for his quality issues, well, hello, her case is one of those. So let's figure out what really happened. Is there any explanation for some of those strange details 
um, the hairs pulled out and, and wrapped around her, the, the, the pieces of bread scattered around. Have you been able to come up with anything? You know, at this point, there's a lot of speculation. Um, I don't think we'll really know until we receive the updated forensic exam results. And I've learned to just let the evidence lead the way. Um, as far as some of the speculation goes, you know, the door being open, somebody may have left in a hurry, the fridge being full but unplugged. It's entirely possible that, you know, the fridge was used to block the door until whoever was in there was ready to leave. And then they just didn't bother to plug it back in. Her hair being ripped out, it could have been from a struggle. It could have also been the result of a drug in her system. Certain drugs result in, uh, hair falling out, um, but there were no illegal drugs in her apartment. There was no sign of drug use by her prior to her death. So that's all still a mystery, really. And I know it's now been 30 years, but it's just hard to imagine that none of the, the detectives or police officers said, no, this just doesn't look right. There's something very, very strange that happened here. I mean, how did this all just sort of get swept under the rug and it, and it be deemed, you know, not a homicide? Well, you know, so East Providence Police Department originally called the case a homicide. The detectives division responded, assessed the scene, took 14 items into evidence and called it what it probably was. Um, and unfortunately for them, they were waiting on the medical examiner's findings. And once you have a cause and manner of death determined by, at that time, the acting chief medical examiner, it's really hard to get that overturned. Um, once that ME said, nope, natural causes, case closed, I think they sort of took that along with what they had heard as far as her drug use and all of that and said, well, you know, there's not much that we can do. Um, and it's it's also really difficult to, I mean, thinking back to 1993, there was an ongoing heroin epidemic, which is, you know, similar to what we see with fentanyl today. Police departments were really overwhelmed by that. Her case was one of any number of cases. So I think they just didn't have enough back then to go on. And honestly, it may have even been for the best, just considering the advancements we have in forensics and uh, the amount of research we've been able to compile. Did you think all this time up until just a couple of years ago that she had died from this heart issue? Or did you in your heart yeah. feel like there was something else? So I'd always been told um, by my mom's family that it was, you know, this heart disease, but there were also some whispers behind the scenes. You know, as a kid growing up, you hear adults talking. And even though I didn't hear all of the details, I would hear things like, oh, you know, there may have been someone who was obsessed with her. Something might have happened where it wasn't natural, but nobody really told me anything. And, you know, to their credit, they wanted me to grow up and go to school and have a normal life. And you know, I found out about all of this, I think, at a point in my life where I was really ready to accept the truth about her case. And I'm glad that it happened now just because it, you know, I was in a great spot where I was able to pursue justice for her. Well, Lauren Malloy, we really appreciate you coming on with us tonight. It's really inspiring how hard you've worked and to see that, um, you know, a, a daughter can take this to the next level and actually get action. Uh, and we'll follow it through. We'll keep an eye on, on, on any developments. Thank you so much for being with us.